in board board meeting. Uh, board members, can I have an, a motion to open up the meeting? I make a motion to uh, open up the meeting. Mo motion made by Mayor Amwada, seconded by Dr. Savaleta. Meeting is open. Um, Mr. Chairman, yes, uh, sir. We requested for a legal opinion from the city attorney. Board member from Texas, and she uh, rendered and told us it would be November 1st. And based on the legal opinion submitted to the city, and I think uh, Mr. Smith, I asked. Well, that's correct. And and uh, if I may take the podium, Mr. yes, sir. Would you please bring that? <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, members, uh, Mayor, uh, esteemed assembly. Uh, first, I apologize for getting this material to you so late. Uh, the border fence issue has been uh, an important topic, and you'll recall that uh, on Tuesday I started my day at 4 in the morning and, and ended it late uh, in the Cameron County uh, Law Library. But the, uh, the question has been presented about the meaning of the word term in the city charter. The terms are unambiguous. And the question uh, is uh, what uh, meaning of the term in the city charter applies and how it affects the current composition of the board. Again, I apologize for getting this uh, to everyone so late. But the Brownsville Charter is clear on several points. Uh, first, it is clear that the commission is to be composed of only six members. in the charter, and so it is given its ordinary and regular meaning, such as when referring to the district. Next, it is clear that one term of service cannot be given until such member is both appointed and sworn in. Is that not correct? Isn't it logically necessary that first a member must be appointed, but he cannot begin the term of service until he takes the oath of office. So that seems to be clear that the term of service does not begin until swearing in. And for that reason, this memo concludes, uh, the one that I had given to the board members, uh, naturally and reasonably that uh, the four-year term of a PUB member begins on the first day after his swearing in and ends on the fourth anniversary of the date of such swearing in. This is only a legal opinion. It is not policy and ha how the board chooses to uh, apply this to uh, any factual situation before the board on that issue I have no recommendation. Questions? Any questions board members? What is the city attorney? Find in either direction that, uh, but his recollections, which recollections are is not an opinion. Chair, how do you read? Okay, well, we're looking at the oath of office of Mr. Valadez on the city of Brownsville letterhead. And yeah, and it's there. So what I rule is. We appreciate Mr. Boss is coming at sitting here at the meeting, but the timing was off, so I ruled that his term begun, begins next meeting. And he's more than welcome to stay here in the, with the with the public oh, audience. November the first. Yeah. November the first. Yeah, November first. So there could be a special meeting before November the first. So November the first? His his term will begin after November first, with all respect to the gentleman and the judge for coming here. But he won't be getting sworn in today until after November 1st. And allow me to be the first to welcome him and to work with him as mayor and as a board member of PUB uh, upon his swearing in. 
Mr. Chairman and Mayor, I uh, respectfully disagree, and uh, I believe that uh, Mr. Vasquez has the right to uh, participate in this meeting, and until there's been some determination by independent sources, which may include a, uh, uh, some, something before a, a judge, uh, to determine who is the proper m member of this board. I really can't participate in this meeting. Uh, the board, Mr. 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 Guerra, uh, allow me first. Mr. Guerra, your, your comments are well noted and respected as a, as a board member and colleague of this board. The chair has ruled. and The, uh, um, the chair doesn't have the authority to rule who well, is or is think, not a member of this board. Challenge it. That is established by the city charter and by the charter Mr. of the city. Mr. Chairman, I, okay, you know what? Let's go I, I, I rule the meeting. The city of Brownsville also of office that Mr. Valadez took in November 10th. And that's the final situation. I make the final judgment. Mr. I'm Davis, the chairman Davis, of the board. Davis, I move now. We, I move we are going to move on. We're not going to be heard here. Agenda item. Be I move that we recess to close meeting, Mr. Chairman. I, well, I, I think want, I'm going to be leaving wanna, at this I, meeting, I and, and maybe I might break the quorum yeah, here. Okay. And I said I have no controlling authority one way or another. He was appointed by the city commission. He was sworn in. At I move PUB. that we go. And one go hour, one session. hour, one hour before, one hour before the meeting, this comes up. What a discourtesy! I'm embarrassed. Please accept my apology. Now, it does Mr. sound now, like a lynch a mob in the action. Situation. That's fine. That's good. Thank you, sir. Would you please recess? 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 The board meeting is in recess now, ladies and gentlemen, or till tomorrow. Till tomorrow. And we move on to item number one. It's a close meeting. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, We're going to go into closed meeting now. No, wait a second. Uh, okay, go ahead. Well, with respect to the quorum issue, I have, uh, during the uh, roughly half hour recess that we've had, had the time to uh, do uh, a fairly complete uh, legal research on the issue, assisted by computer-assisted uh, legal research, and specifically uh, Westlaw and Lexis. While there's no precise case on point, uh, let me offer a couple of thoughts. We always start, of course, as always, with the language of the Charter. And the language of the Charter, Article 6, Section 4, Paragraph D states as follows. May I read it to you? Yes. The board shall hold a regular meeting at least once a month on such days the board may select. End of quote. Now, as we all know, or specifically as I know, and I'm recommending to you the word shall is mandatory. Uh, this is not the United States Senate where, for example, a quorum call, qu quorum call is, a, uh, is a normal and accepted parliamentary uh, usage. Rather, this is a commission, a commission that deals with weighty matters on a regular basis, but only meets once a month. And for that reason... Board. We call it a board here, not a commission. A board, excuse me. And in the factual context of those grave responsibilities and the fact that the board shall hold just one regular meeting each month, permitting the walkout or boycott of a meeting by a minority to break a quorum would be contra to the clear intent of the drafters of the uh, charter and uh, as a matter of course a practical matter would impede any sort of progress with uh, respect to the important work of the PUB. With all that in mind I offer my opinion that uh, the walkout or boycott once a quorum is established and it has been established by the previous presence of Mr. Villarreal and, uh, yeah. and uh, <coughs> Guerra. What's Robert that? Guerra. Yeah, I'm not including him in the in the quorum. I'm just including Mr. Mr. Uh, uh, and Mr. Uh, Villarreal, because after all, it would be inconsistent to suggest that Mr. Valadez is still on the board, but that Guerra's, Mr. Guerra's presence or absence would affect the quorum in any way. So let me make it clear, and I've had some excellent questions here. Uh, that um, Mr. Garris' presence or absence does not uh, calculate in the calculus of the analysis here. Are you talking about oh. Mr. Vasquez? No, no, he's talking about Mr. Guerra. Guerra. You're talking about, Guerra. talking about Mr. Guerra, yes. I'm the regular saying. board member. 
He's talking about Mr. Guerra. That with Mr. Verdial, we open up a quorum. You don't need more. You just need one more to have a quorum. That's what he's saying. That's what I'm trying to say. In, in, and I should have used the non-legalese language. Any questions, Mr. Chairman? No. Nope. Any questions, gentlemen? Okay. The only in question your, is, uh, in your opinion, we constitute a quorum. We have a legal meeting right now. Is that correct? You have a legal, yes, no, and yes. Yes, you have a legal meeting. A quorum had been established. Uh, with so the we presence have a quorum previously. now. Yes. Well, there is a, a quorum that has been established by the previous presence of, uh, of the former, of the other members. Okay. But with Mr. Valadez here, do we now have a quorum? Yes, you do have. Clearly you have a quorum. Okay. Can yes. we conduct business? Yes, sir. Yes. Mr. Davidson, do we have a quorum? Okay. Okay, but we recess. We can call back in the recess. Okay. okay. In this instance, Mr. Valadez, as board member, that he was sworn in. What day were you sworn in? What day was he sworn in? November 10th. November 10th. Oh. November 10th. If, if that's the true date. Okay. You defer to Jim Gozen. You got it. Thank you, Mr. Davidson. Okay. As uh, recognized quorum, we, I, I, I uh, suggest the chairman conduct the business of the board. I move that we go into closed session. Motion made by Dr. Savaleta to move into closed session. I second. Second by Mayor Amarba to go into closed session. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any against? Motion carries. Motion carries. We now move into closed session, ladies and gentlemen. I pledge, pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, of America and, and to, to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Invocation, ladies and gentlemen. There was a saint that they chose to take care of the animals and the dogs and the cats of the world, and his name was St. Francis of Sicily. St. Francis, pray for us. And Lord, your blessings over the PUB employees and the citizens of Brownsville. Amen. 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 Okay. Where's, where's Joshua? Um, a sissy. That's right. They told me a sissy, but it is a sissy. Okay. Number one. We're going to go to number one, which is discussion and action on employment contract for in house attorney. Mr. Chairman, at the board's uh, direction, uh, we have uh, prepared an attorney employment contract for John Carl Schmidt. Um, it contains the terms authorized by the board at the last meeting, and we have presented it to him. I believe he is in agreement with it, and we have presented it to the board, and we would ask that it be approved. Okay. Subject to the changes we discussed. Subject to the changes we discussed. Session? Correct. And does he need to be present for this? Doesn't need to be. Also move, Mr. Chairman. Second. Motion made by Mr. Valadez, seconded by Dr. Savaleta uh, to okay the employment contract for the in-house attorney. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. With the changes? With, with uh, to drafted by Davis. With the changes drafted by the attorneys, Davis and Troyola. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any against? Motion passes unanimously. There was no action taken on items discussed or there was that. There was two. Do I need to announce those? Do you think? Okay. Chairman. We now move to the chairman's report. And I'm happy to announce that the PUB residential customers started benefiting from the new lower electric customer service charges beginning October 1st. Also, the electric customer service charge was reduced from $3 from 553 to 253 per month. In addition, the PUB customers are also paying lower electrical bills compared to last year because the fuel and purchased energy is lower than the same month last year. In October 2006, <laughs> the fuel and purchased energy charge was 
0.058 cents per kilowatt hour, and in October 2007, the charge is 0.045 cents per kilowatt hour. The reduction is due to the PUB additional purchase of the Oakland Union Coal Fire Power Plant. PUB customers continue to benefit from this purchase through the reduction in fuel costs that are passed on directly to the customers. The total savings are estimated to be approximately $1 million per month. In October 2007, the average PUV customer paid $94.61 for 1,000 kilowatt hours, compared to $110.61 in October 2006. This means that PUV customers paid $16 less compared to the same month last year. In October of last year, PUV customers were paying about $0.11 cents per kilowatt hour and this October, the cost has gone down to 9.5 cents per kilowatt hour. The Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting has been awarded to Public Utilities Board of the City of Brownsville by the Government Finance Officers Association of the United States and Canada for the Brownsville Public Utility Board's Comprehensive Annual Financial Report. The Certificate of Achievement is the highest form of recognition in the area of governmental accounting and financial reporting, and its attainment represents a significant accomplishment by a government and its management. The award of financial reporting achievement will be presented to the Chief Financial Officer, Leandro Garcia, during a special presentation the beginning of December. The Certificate of Achievement in Financial Reporting has been judged by an impartial panel to meet the high standards of the program, including demonstrating a constructive spirit of full disclosure to clearly communicate its financial story and motivate potential users. As Chairman of the Brownsville Public Utility Board of Directors, I want to congratulate Mr. Garcia and the Finance and Accounting Department staff for their hard work and commitment to excellence in getting this prestigious award. On Thursday, October 4th, the PUB Board of Directors held their second strategic and business planning meeting. Al Virial, Dr. Joe Savalera, and I attended the meeting. Chief Executive Officer John Brusiak, Chief Operating Officer Fernando Sainz, and Chief Financial Officer Leandro Garcia also attended the meeting facilitated by R.W. Beck. The purpose of the meeting was to update the board on planning process and progress to date. The issues include a skilled and knowledgeable workforce must be attracted, developed, and retained. Issue number two, our quality, reliability, technology must be improved and maintained in the face of growing infrastructure and business demands. Number three, enhanced community perception must be achieved through positive relations with customers, policymakers, and the media. Number four, our financial stability must be enhanced and maintained. Number five, we must conduct all our activities with an increased business focus and mindset. The PUB CPT members have also identified strategies, tactics, and tasks plans that include resources, schedules, budgets for each of the issues. The PUB strategic plan project is expected to be completed by the end of November. And I wanted to just say another little spot here about something that I as a citizen of Brownsville, a proud citizen, has I've done in the last eight years. I've chosen a little piece of property on, in Brownsville that belongs to the city of Brownsville with the permission of the city of Brownsville, and I've planted 75 Washingtonian palm trees, 20 Florida sable palms, five live oaks, three maple trees, one red bottle brush tree, and many, many bougainvilleas, oleanders, and other subtropical South Texas brushes. Uh, I've done that on my own with my wife and my kids. The, the purchase of the trees have come from me. And you know, ladies and gentlemen, it's so beautiful, that piece of land that, that, that I, I've worked on for about seven or eight years. It's on Resaca Boulevard, right on the Resaca, on city property, right in front of Incarnate Word Academy and Via Maria. And you know, with 175,000 residents in the city of Brownsville, I, one, one citizen, 
have planted over 150 trees that have taken root and now are, are, are rising up over 30 feet tall. If only each citizen could plant one tree, could you imagine how beautiful Brownsville would be? John Brusiak, General Manager's Report. Next, uh, once you poll the board, uh, whatever whatever is convenient, I'll, I'll go with the board. Next, regular scheduled board meeting. I won't be here. <laughs> what, whatever you decide is fine with me. And if anybody has a problem with it, oh, I'm easy. Mr. Chairman, uh, Mayor, members of the board, uh, my name is Andrew Garcia, Chief Financial Officer for Brownsville PUB. I have prepared an expanded uh, uh, report for today, about 18 slides. I am only going to do a couple, two or three in the interest <laughs> of time. Uh, and uh, looking at the year to date, uh, net, operating, net operating revenues uh, through August, uh, we were at 148 million, 522.411. After including other revenues, interest on investments, and other non-operating income, our gross revenues totaled uh, year-to-date 157 million 942. Uh, in order to get to the to the adjusted gross revenue space for calculating the city transfer, uh, we back out fuel and energy costs, wholesale energy expenses, and our southmost uh, contribution, uh, netting out to 94 million 845, and that's the basis for the city transfer uh, calculation of 9 million 484. On the expense side, uh, total requirements uh, year to date are 61 million, uh, 191, uh, that includes operating, non operating, and debt service, excluding the fuel and Southmost. Uh, the balance to surplus uh, as of August 31st is 29 million 871. Uh, the, the, the share of that uh, balance, uh, 5.7 million, uh, is the net transfer to the COB net of their usage of 3.7 million, and 24 million 168 is available to the PUB for. Uh, continued uh, funding of the various reserve funds and internal use for CIP purposes. Uh, 916,000 has gone to our operating reserve, uh, 3.6 million to our fuel adjustment sub account, and that has assisted us in, in maintaining a low fuel factor during the summer months. CIP funding, uh, 13.8 million. Improvement reserve fund, 2.7 million. Uh, for the total of 21,202 and scheduled to uh, funding for our reserves, and then we do have, as of August 31st, a 2.9 million uh, uh, surplus balance. Uh, that concludes my presentation. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, um, we're going to now move into the public comment section. Lights, please. The first concerned citizen we have from Five Robins Lane, Ms. Deborah Strong. Yes, please, to the podium. Can bring those mics down so we can all hear you and they can get recorded good. There you go, right okay. there. Very good. Hi. Good evening. How are you? Um, I am a resident at Five Robins Lane, and uh, I'm a little nervous. I don't know. That's okay. That's okay. Hey, no don't problem. Don't be nervous. Um, I had a question. I needed to know what normal procedures or steps are involved when accusations are made of meter tampering. Well, we can't. We, we can't. We, I, well, that's what I'm going to tell her. We can't respond. You have five minutes okay. to let us know everything okay. that's bothering you or on your mind or anything um, like that. And I then we, later on, we can have somebody meet with you. This but summer, um, I was gone for a good part of, of the summer. Um, I traveled a lot because of work and my children were gone as well. The only person in my house was the maid and I had some contractors there, but no water was being used because the water was shut off. And um, I went online to check my, my bill and I, I noticed that it wasn't going down. And I've had several incidents with PUB, several since I've moved there in Get, get closer to the mic, please. Okay. There you go, right there. I've had several incidents with PUB since I moved there in 2004, first involving the water meter, 
which I knew they weren't going out there reading the meter because I purposely put an ant pile there one time. For three months, they didn't go out there and read it. And then this summer, I noticed that my electric bill wasn't going down, my water bill wasn't going down, even though the water was shut off because they were working on plumbing. So I contacted PUB and requested that somebody go out there to check the meter. And they told me, uh, it was a young lady that answered, I don't remember who, that they would go out there. But I asked her, why isn't it going down? She's like, well, the hot summer heat. And I said, but the water is shut off. I don't understand why my water bill isn't going down. So short story, somebody finally did show up. Okay, by this time, it was the second week of September, right before school started. At that time, I had come down during the weekend to bring my son back from El Paso. My 15-year-old son calls me panicking and tells me that there's a member of PUB out there threatening to shut off the electricity. And I said, well, I'm sure they have to do that because they have to check the meter. So. He's like, no, Mom, they said they're going to shut it off because we're stealing electricity. And I said, excuse me, stealing electricity. And I was thinking, well, maybe the plumbers were, you know, we have alleyway access. And I was thinking that maybe they had plugged in their electrical cords to our neighbor's house. Um, wait, you know? can you get closer to the mic? Okay. Somebody's complaint. Did you say stealing electricity? Stealing oh, okay. electricity. So I said, well, are the contractors using the neighbor's electricity? That was the first thought that came to my mind, was that they had used extension cords and they were plugged into my neighbor's house that had, you know, we have outside cords or, or jacks, whatever you want to call them. And he's like, no, Mom, you said that somebody messed with the, with the meter box. And I'm like, the meter box? Well, nobody's messed with anything. And I remembered the contractor that I had working there was also going to be fixing my patio light. So I said, well, hold on one second. Let me, first, let me talk to the man that's there from PUB. So he put the man on the, on the line, and I was very upset. And I said, first of all, my son might appear to be, you know, an adult, but he's not. He's only 15. You know, and I don't understand what you would be doing talking to a 15-year-old. That was very upsetting. Second, I was out of town. I was you know, panicking. I'm like, what, what's going on? So then um, he said, well, I need to call the cops. We're going to make a report. I said, well, you're not going to shut off my electricity because I've done nothing wrong. And tell me what is going on. He's like, well, we're going to send an officer out here. I can't talk to you. I said, excuse me, you can't talk to me, but you're talking to a 15-year-old minor. And I said, that's fine. Do what you have to do. So we hung up. I called, and they Con they put me in contact with Eddie Hernandez. I suppose he was customer service. I'm not sure what, but about a week ago, I found out that he's no longer here. So anyway, that's about the time that I received, or I went online, and I saw a $7,759 bill. So I called to try to get an explanation. The young lady on the phone couldn't give me an explanation. So then she had Susan call me, and they told me that I was being accused of electrical Another 45 theft. Seconds. Keep up going. Okay. So now I like an explanation since when did, you know, the employees of PUB become the judge and jury? I like an explanation as to why did they take the meter box without my consent? Why did I never receive notification? Do they go out there? prior to people connecting new services and check the meter box. I am one of those persons, I'm always out of town. My services have gotten disconnected several times because I forget to pay or I pay late. So I like to know if somebody went and tampered with that box or they haven't given me an explanation and I want an explanation. You're going to you, get you were told to tell me we can't respond. Uh, yeah. Leave it to the manager there to. I just, I, just, I just want to ask a question. No, you can't do that. Oh, can I question? Okay. But can the can the I chairman just like allow to make, that? I just like to yeah. make one last comment. Surely, I'm not smart enough to go into a meter box and tamper with it, 
And I'm not dumb enough to call PUB up to go out there and check a box if I had tampered with it. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. John, John, can you get together with her or right now before she leaves? She needs some answers well, right now. If well, possible. After the meeting, uh, then we can't get into the discussion. Let's go. Anybody else? Can we with her? That's it, Mr. M. K. That's it right there. We now move on to. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Ruiz. With all respect, please. You have a libre or something to give to Mr. Amada so he can come down, Dr. Savaleta. We need to take it easy, Mr. Amada, and we need to respect the people that come here. Slow sorry. down, please. I'm sorry. And let's be respectful to the lady and to the other persons that are here. I I, I brought I got here late. Uh, here. <laughs> Mr. Reese, the, the reason is that we, we cannot get into discussion with the speaker. I am speaker. aware, sir. That's, all, that's know, all. I just want to make sure we follow. The young lady is not aware of policy. This is yeah. the first time she shows up here. But we need to slow down, sir. Pero, I would like to also, sir. Hold on, Ruiz. Remember, the, the little paper that you signed back there says to respect the board members, and he's I'm the mayor. He's the honorable mayor. Last time you came in here, you told him some stuff, too. That guy's being a gentleman and just saying, okay, but por favor, sir, Mr. Ruiz, I, you're a you. fine gentleman. I know I'm a gentleman, sir, but please let me... That knows how to deal with that, people. Uh, let, you know, I have a right to rebuke that because, you know, Mr. the mayor was say, giving his back to the podium. When? And this is disrespectful to the person that's speaking here. Well, not I'm not time, a disrespectful man. person. I come here to address issues. I have nothing against the mayor or Mr. Savaleta or Mr. Buziak or anybody. My business is issues. Thank you, sir. The issue, sir, that I'm here today is because I read an article in the newspaper about Resaca restoration for $135 million. Is, is your Resaca included there? It, okay. it better be because no, it kidding. needs help. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is that 135 by the time, and you want to issue bonds, they're talking about $400 million, close to half a billion. We're already too much in debt here at the PUB, sir. Somebody's going to have to pay for that. And, you know, it's not to the interest of the constituency for you all to take care of the resacas here. That's not, your, that's not your jurisdiction. Now, if you want places to reserve water for the future, if you want to, for desalination plants, we should also address companies here in the United States, like General Electric is the number one company for desalination. Somebody wants to go to Spain. I don't know from where. I don't know what entity. What are you going to go do in Spain? General Electric is here to set it up for you and get it rolling. They'll even finance you at a low rate of interest. And I would like to also inform this, this, uh, this uh, 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 body that this is an illegal meeting. You don't have a quorum. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Okay, Reese. thank you, sir. Now we now move on to item number five, consideration and approval of action to reinstate Rodriguez, Colvin, and Cheney to perform all the legal services for the Brownsville Public Utilities Board previously performed prior to October 1st, 2007. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I make the motion to allow our chairman to the discretion to farm out uh, litigating matters, okay? The general manager uh, litigation matters, uh, based on advice from uh, in-house counsel to get together with general manager to uh, farm out uh, uh, those uh, matters that cannot be taken care of in-house only, okay? But he this, needs to come to the board for this is not the This is not what the item shows. The item shows consideration and approval of acts to reinstate. No. Yes, it does. It's no, but that's not what the, my motion is. I know. Your motion, is, I mean, there's, there's nothing... Nothing like that in the, in the, in the Can item. I make that kind of motion, uh, Mr. Smith? It, uh, or can I, do I need to withdraw my motion? I know what the item says. That's not what I wanted. It appears to be that the motion, as you phrased it, to allow the chairman to uh, uh, seek out uh, litigation counsel uh, in consultation with in-house counsel would fall within the broader scope of the express language. And so I think it's a proper motion. That's not, what, that's not what's on the agenda, gentlemen. It's not. Uh, it's approval of action to reinstate. That's what it says. And I move that we do not reinstate Rodriguez, Colvin, and Cheney. Okay, I withdraw my motion. Oh. Second. Okay, motion made by Dr. Savaleta, seconded by Mr. Valadez to not approve 
the reinstatement of Rodriguez, Colvin, and Cheney to perform all the legal services for the Brownsville PUB previously performed prior to October 1st. All those against? All those in favor of this motion. All those in favor of this motion? Aye. In favor of the motion as stated. As stated. Aye. Aye. All those against? Motion passes. Okay. Now, can I make a motion to authorize the general manager? If it's within the scope of the express language on the action item. It's done. <clears throat> let's, okay. let's hear it and then we'll decide. Okay. Uh, um, I want to, <laughs> if it's possible, Doctor, if it's possible, to, to allow the general manager the discretion along with consultation with uh, in-house counsel to farm <coughs> out uh, legal matters that require outside the scope of in-house counsel for litigating purposes that discretion. Your intentions are good and I would second the motion but it's not on the agenda. We cannot move on this well, then uh, item. It doesn't, it dies for lack of a second if well, that's I would. what it is. Okay, but that was just an added part after five. We finished item number five. No, we're with on five still. We're on five still. Well, see, we've already voted. Motions if, if okay. We already voted on that. Let's go to the next item. Okay, item number six, discussion okay, of the dice for the lack of a second. On, the, on the, the whole item five. No, no. my motion. Oh, your motion. motion. Dice for lack Mr. Armada's motion dies for a lack of second. We now move on to... Item number six, discussion and possible action regarding PUB policies for reporting violations by customers receiving utility services. Mr. Brusiak. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, this was an item in light of the uh, recent assessment that the board has made to request by Mr. Real to look at our policy for reporting violations. You know, uh, Attorney John Schmidt has worked on looking at some other utilities that we're dealing with. I would just ask that we come back. We don't have a recommendation yet to change our policy, but if all other districts would change it to make it really clear that this is a problem. Well, I, before we table it, I think uh, because there's there's some concerns out there and there's some allegations out oh, there. If Mayor, if you please, I think this motion was uh, was placed on there because of an incident that happened uh, at, at my home. Uh, for your consideration, uh, board, I'm not going to be here after this meeting, but uh, I would uh, recommend that, that you do look into this. Uh, I would recommend that uh, the policy states something. If the board, if the if the person at the home is is going to be, uh, if there's going to be any kind of uh, charges filed with the police department, have the homeowner there and sign something, and also to have whatever allegations they they they, they say that that occurred, make them visible to the to the customer. I mean, show them the meter that, you know, that, that I, I, I never, I was never privy to, and, and let, have them sign the police report. I mean, you got to have some kind of stuff, not just uh, five, six months later, somebody comes up, hey, there's a police report here. What do you know about it? But, well, we we this, but, this, but, I, but regarding this incident, did you follow policy, yes. <clears throat> existing policy? Okay, uh, and I think this is important because the press is here, the public's here. Mr. Strom had an incident, you had an incident, uh, and, and I wanted to state for the record also, when this incident happened with Chris, which he denies tampering the meter, he denied it to you, he denied it to me, okay? I called you, okay? And I told you, check my meter, okay? Because I know in-house stuff was getting out. Uh, he had an incident where family business was all over the internet. Stuff that was confidential customer service was out all over the internet. And I think that was done to try and discredit the, the board or a board member, okay? And I called you after this incident. I told you to go check my meter. And you did. You said somebody check my meter. The, the, uh, the seal on my meter was broken, okay? So it looks like somebody could have want to tamper with it, but you found and you checked the meter, it was not tampered with, my consumption is high, higher than the average and the norm, and it's still high. Okay, 
well, I know you appreciate it, but I mean, I want the public to know. That so we checked all the meters. You that. checked all the meters of the board at my request. Yeah. Because let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, just because allegations are made, that doesn't make them true. I stand by my friend. <laughs> well, uh, what is it? What is it? Let me, sir, let me tell you why I stand by my friend. Because if he was going to cheat on that, I think he would have cheated where he would have benefited the most. That would be a commercial account that he has or has several, okay? One. Two, in this business, like he says, you make fast friends and eternal enemies. And unfortunately, politics is a dirty business. And some people will go to any length to discredit us or to undermine us, as we saw early on when this all started with checks of NSF going out that shouldn't have gone out from in-house in here, okay? Checks were made good. It happens to a lot of people that write a check to pay utility bill, and, and it comes back for insufficient funds. But the check was made good. But those checks shouldn't be out there in the public, but they were done to discredit us. So I stand by my friend, and I, I reported my situation on my meter, okay? And my meter... I want it clear. It was not found to be tampered, but the seal was broken. And Honorable, just, just, honorable Mayor, th those are well-said words. And I wanted to say something also. You know, <clears throat> since that, that situation happened, I looked into my situation I think, at the house, and I said, John, John has, how about my meter? Let me go look at my meter. And they said, no, we already switched out your meter. I didn't even know my meter ever got switched out. My house is only eight years old. Why would it need a new meter? I don't know. So that's just one thing. And another situation, as a proud board member and proud chairman of the board of the Public Utilities Board, ladies and gentlemen, I, I heard about all this through the Brownsville Herald. We never were informed about anything uh, of this nature, of this situation, until I opened up the Brownsville Herald the next morning. And John, it's just a verbal reprimand. Let us know in the future. Don't let four or five months go and not tell any board member. We must know those, those things and instead of getting surprised by the media. Dr. Savaleta? Well, yeah, I, just, think, I think you can incorporate that into the new policies. He followed the policies that exist. He treated this like anybody else. Okay. Just for the record, let me just state that I did not know anything about the alleged incident with Mr. Valadez until I read it in the Brownsville Herald. I did not know anything about it. Just for the record. Thank you. I don't want anybody thinking we're trying to cover up something, John. In any allegations, this was in any way retaliation is not true. Have you been uh, approached by the members to, to fire anybody? Okay. And I, gr I agree with him on the, you know, politics are dirty. Look at that. A famous developer here in town, I happened to see him at City Hall many months ago, and I got close to him to say hello, and I think our suits rubbed, and he ran off to the police station to get me on an assault charge. <laughs> That's politics, Brownsville style. Do we need to make a uh, table vote? I move, I move that we table, table item number six. Back with uh, some specific uh, or uh, Motion policies, made. whatever. Yes, sir. Motion made by Dr. Savaleta and seconded by the mayor to table this item. We now move on to item number all those in favor to table. Okay. All those in favor to table? Aye. 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 Any against? All opposed. Motion All carries. Motion carries. Item number seven. Discussion and action to approve travel to attend the World Congress on Desalination and Water Reuse in Gran Canaria, Spain. Mr. Brusiak. Okay. Mr. Brusiak has asked this to be tabled because it's become a political issue when it shouldn't have been a political issue. Uh, we're looking to invest $150 million in the desal plant here in Brownsville, and we need the support of the governor and the TWC board. This was an opportunity for PUB to go and see the technology of the remainder of the world and what we can apply to PUB here to make sure we get the highest return on our investment. That's why I was asking uh, that, that, that John go and myself, because I've met with TWC board members, I've gone to the water water conferences. I'm, uh, I'm very interested in making this desal plant uh, happen, but because uh, it would be politicized, John asked me uh, to have a table, and I will respect his wishes. Let me, let me just say before we vote on this. Go, I wish you would go with nobody else. Yeah, I, I yeah, respect let, his let me just say a few words. 
you know, we're going to probably invest something like $100 million, $150 million. You know, not going to a conference like this, uh, I think it's, it's, it's penny-wise and pound-foolish. I really do. But, uh, you know, if you want to table this, and I, I so move that. And, and, and one, before we do the table, by the year 2050, at the rate we're going, there may not be enough water for any more inhabit inhabitants to move into the valley by the year 2050. There may not be enough water for everybody, every business and residence in the valley. That's why the PUD is 40 years ahead of its time in thinking about this, and this was put on there. Um, I second mo the motion. Motion was made to table this item by Dr. Savaleta, seconded by the mayor. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any against? This motion is tabled. We are now going to jump ahead to number nine, presentations and interviews of architectural engineering firms for the design, planning, and construction management of the new Energy Control and Incident Command Center building. Mr. Sines. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, we have uh, presentations that are scheduled for uh, selection process, which will be the next item. Uh, what we're going to do is, is ask the the three firms that are here to make 10-minute presentations and allow you five minutes worth of questions. You should have a, a package there that includes their statement of qualifications. This will be a selection based on qualifications, <clears throat> so you can see what uh, uh, what they presented to us or turned into us. Also, you'll have the evaluation from a, of the committee that the staff put together, uh, and they did interviews of all of these firms that that uh, did submit an application to. Uh, uh, application for consideration. <clears throat> so we're going to go through in alphabetical order. The first f firm that we're going to be taking a look at would be Robert Lamb, followed by Robert J. Ruiz, and then by Stanford Knowles. Fernando, let me ask you a question. Yes, sir. In regards to the uh, evaluation criteria, yes, the sir. average, the higher the, the number, the better the correct. evaluation. Is yes. that correct? Okay. Yes, that's correct. Okay, can we continue? Is that a quorum? Yeah. There was one correction on the RFQ hey, that, that, that just adjusted the Where's date. Where's he going? Put to the back. Okay. So that's oh, okay. be for a building <clears throat> off of the Martin Hall property that we purchased for the overhead storage facility on the water side. Okay. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Mayor, members of the board, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you very much for the opportunity to be here just to tell you what our capabilities are in terms of control center design and construction. My name is Pete Vreeland. I'm vice president in charge of the consultant oh. control center operations for Robert E. Lamb. Can you hear me all right? No. Yes, sir. Uh, I can. Is that better? I, I, can, you, can you raise that? Uh, <coughs> I don't think they raised that much. <laughs> my, okay. my voice is kind of going to pot this week anyway. Uh, but I, I, we do appreciate the opportunity to be here. Uh, a little bit about Robert E. Lamb, we do three things. We plan, we design, and we build. And we have quite a reputation across the country in terms of construction. Uh, planning, again, is you're developing the concepts of what you really want to build. And before any money is spent in design or any money is spent in construction, you have a plan that this is what you're actually going to get. We have the capability of providing the uh, detailed design and the construction documents, and we can also build the project for you. A little bit of history about LAM. LAM started in 1917. All the way I sound and look, I was not there in 1917 when it was founded. Um, in 1949, 
uh, we developed a, a n another capability, a design capability. We, in 1917, we were building manufacturing plants in the city of Philadelphia. We're located in Valley Forge, Pennsylvania, as we speak. In 1964, we de developed a planning function. This is going out into industry, getting people that have been engineers and managers to come in and actually do facility planning so we could actually go into a design activity and construction activity that will give you a facility that works. Our first control center project was in 1969, and we, that was for PJM. I'm not sure whether you know who PJM is, but they're the, they started out at that point in time as being an interconnect, uh, taking care of the transmission trading that in, existed between Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Maryland. They were dry, diagonally across the street from us. They had a problem with their contractor. Our sign said, planning, design, and construction. They said, can you help us? We said, sure, what is it? And it's a three-story underground control center that still exists today. And if you know what PJM is, you know what they've done all year. And since that point in time, we've done over 200 high reliability projects, the vast majority of them being control centers. <coughs> In-house, our capabilities are on the planning side. We developed a conceptual plan. We define the project to the point where we can put good cost estimates on it, and you have a, have a floor plan that will work and we will give you cost estimates. And if the, depending upon where you are budgetarily, the cost estimates, maybe we have to make adjustments to the plan to get the budget in line. Uh, In-house also, we have architectural, civil, structural, mechanical, and engineering. Uh, they are in-house, and I stress that for the point of we don't go out and, and subcontract to anybody else. We don't work in the, those partnerships. If we have a question that we need answered, from a HVAC standpoint, from an electrical standpoint, we walk to the end of the hall and get the answer rather than have to go to another firm to do it. On the construction side, we provide construction engineering, management of the construction projects, and also the field supervision to make sure the project is built according to specifications and plans. Uh, the planning aspect of it, what we do, I, and I just want to run through how thorough this is because this is the basis by which everything happens and what is really the heart and soul of our business. We come on to site and we, do a, we go through a survey requirements and a functional analysis. And this is interviews with management, supervision, operators, anybody involved in the project. We want to find out what each individual operator dispatcher is doing. Uh, and then we can also bring to the mix what other utilities are doing so we can have discussions with them at that period of time. Office and space standards. If they exist for the city, we will use them. If they don't, we will recommend office standards to be able to use so we can get to the right square footage for the building. Proximity relationships, that's who's next to who, who's far away from who. We want to make sure that that gets aligned. We add, add all those factors together and we can develop a space plan to, to, to come up with a total amount of square foot you really need for the building. Security analysis has become a tremendously important entity. Um, this is 9-11 uh, type security. This is making sure that nobody gets into the control room that's not supposed to get into the control room. This is protecting the building against uh, natural and man-made desires, uh, designs. Uh, and we go through a thorough analysis of that. Um, location analysis and site selection is part of the activities that we do, but in this particular case, you already have a site selected, so we don't have to go into that particular portion. The internal uh, areas of the control room, uh, we pay uh, the most attention to the ergonomic design of it. This is so the operator working at their console and looking at the map order video, whichever presentation you have for, uh, for uh, a display wall, uh, that the work area that they're using to operate, they don't have to travel very far, the heads don't have to move very much, and we get it is a nice working environment for them, and everything is ergonomically correct. We develop map board and video presentations. Um, uh, different utilities are doing different things throughout the country, and we bring that into the mix as what other people are doing, what might you like to do to display what problems you might have with the system. Uh, floor plan, we're developing the actual layouts of the facility, not only just the control center portion of it, but also the, the offices that are associated with it, the, uh, the break rooms, the restrooms, the kitchens, the, the uh, oversight rooms, etc. Uh, one of the biggest complaints that we see of going around the country is lighting. Uh, I don't think I've been in a control center in the last five years where people said, can you do something about the lighting, please? We put in uh, indirect lighting in most, most cases, but we make sure it's dimmable and workable, et cetera. One of the biggest things that's happening uh, across the nation right now is reliability, and, and that ties to redundant systems. Uh, NERC, for instance, has gone up, and they've actually created a new 
department and a new department head strictly involved in reliability and that is what you have to do to make sure that your system is operating all the time. Redundant systems, making sure that you have enough power that if you lose one power source, you have a backup power source. If you lose your air conditioning, you have a backup system for your air conditioning. Your computers are not going to last very long if you don't have a redundant system in an HVAC and you lose that. <coughs> we put this together and uh, we, define, we put a, a building definition together. Our actual terminology for that definition is a design narrative where we're actually telling you these are the finishes that we're going to use, this is the type of carpet, this is the type of ceiling, um, this is the type of acoustical treatment that you're going to use, this is how it's going to be structurally put together, this is what the mechanical equipment we're going to use, what the electrical equipment, and that all comes in a package of a design narrative. Site utilization, again, that gets into protection of the building, and uh, uh, there are various ways to protect the site, especially if you're looking at against a man-made threat. Um, we provide a schedule, we provide a bu budget estimate, and then we tie that all together in a report so you have something to make a judgment against as yes, we will go forward with it and this is the amount of dollars that we would need to do it. The end result of that might look something like this. Um, this is a rendering of a control center in uh, Ohio and um, it's, I, I'm showing it as a rendering rather than a picture. The picture looks almost identical to that except it's a diff different display on the wall. But we have the capability of providing the rendering so people can get an understanding of what that building really looks like. Um, the issues that have come up of late that have really made people start to do more with control centers than they had before, Hurricane Katrina. We're doing a lot of work in the Gulf with different utilities at the moment because of damage or threats of damage that they might have from a hurricane. Brownouts and blackouts. Um, the previous picture you just saw is the result, thank you, is the result of the blackouts we had in the Northeast. That was the replacement for where it all started. 9-11 security, obviously. And then FERC and NERC regulations are getting to be more stringent as you go along. In the last three years, these are some of the clients we work for. You might recognize some of the names. Um, if anybody wanted to go and visit one, I think the one in the middle with the yellow and the blue, if anybody recognizes that, that's the Hawaiian Islands. That was a control center in Honolulu that was hurricane proof and built inside a parking garage. Um, in the last, since, since 2001, that's some of the control centers that we have worked for. Uh, again, we've done over 200 of them. I have a list if it's of interest to anybody of projects that we've had before that also. Uh, but you might look at some of those names and they'd be uh, familiar to you. Uh, we're currently working for Entergy, we're currently working for Southern, and we're currently working for um, a few other firms that are not up here. Uh, we've done work for the city of Gainesville, we're working for ATC in, um, in Wisconsin as we speak. Um, why choose LAM? Uh, we have a solid national reputation. We've operated in 44 different states. Uh, our size, we have about 65 people in the office. We're small enough to, to be able to give you individual attention. The president of the company is thoroughly familiar with every project that we have in-house, uh, but we're not so large that you become a number as a different project. Uh, our experience, when we have done over 200 of them, we think we've done a, a little bit in the experience time. All the, discipline, all the design disciplines in-house, and I think it's a very important factor in being able to get things done expeditiously. We're up to date with current industry practices. We can bring that to the mix. Thank you. Uh, single responsibility plan, design and construct, and thank you. I'd be happy to entertain any questions that you might, might, might have. I think Gentlemen, wonderful. Thank Great. you. Thank you so much. Do we have to have two SCADA systems? You'd have we're required to have uh, a primary and a backup. So we're, we're trying to build this as a primary and then use yeah, it. would be backup. But it needs to be something that, that uh, is strong enough. That is strong enough to withstand any, any type of uh, event like a hurricane, tornado, and things like 200 that. 200 mile hour winds. The latest ones we've known have been 250 miles now. 250? Yeah. It, it all, that's a defined FEMA number that, uh, for the given area that you're at, and 250. Thank you so much, and uh, uh, welcome much. to Brownsville. Thank you. Thank you. The next firm that we'll have for you to, uh, for the presentation is uh, Robert J. Ruiz, Architect, Inc. will be here to make a presentation.
Chairman, members of the board, my name is Roberto Ruiz. I want to thank you, the board, members of the staff, and the committee for selecting me as one of the finalists for this uh, important project for PUB. My team consists of, obviously, PUB as the main head of the top. I will be the project architect. I'm a local architect here in Brownsville. Roberto Ruiz will be coordinating all aspects of the, the project. Under my de design team, we will have Jester Quintanilla Structural Engineers out of San Antonio, HMG with the Mechanical Electrical and Plumbing Engineers out of San Antonio, and Mejia and Rose Civil Engineers here locally. My office and business have been practiced in Texas since 1989. We do architecture, architecture, architecture planning, extensive uh, similar projects. We've done the Port of Browns Union Pacific Railroad Administrative Building here locally recently involve communication systems, security systems, and data systems and, and coordinated. Also more recently, we uh, did uh, completed the University of Texas at Brownsville, the ITEC Workforce Training Center, uh, coordination of law enforcement, nursing, uh, communications, and other staff, uh, and other work uh, training uh, uh, seminars in there. Uh, the Port of Brownsville, the Harvard Masters Building, the Mr. Sanchez uh, uh, Building, uh, we also did a while back, we coordinated a lot of with uh, uh, different agencies, uh, uh, the Port of Brownsville, communications, uh, high-tech uh, systems that we incorporate into the building. Municipal Utility District Administrative Building, the mud building along the uh, expressway underneath the golf ball uh, tower in, in, in Rancho Viejo, we did that building and coordinated the administration, uh, the municipal utilities uh, with that uh, uh, entity. Uh, most recently also, well, the Kevin County Court out, uh, Court House, we also did, I uh, skipped over the uh, Kemp County Parks Department that we did at the island, a similar type of building coordinated uh, with the community uh, communication systems as such. And then most recently, the Kemp County Courthouse, the Dancy Building, which as we all know, is, it has been an extensive project, and we did coordinate a lot of, with the different departments, agencies, uh, staff in, in terms of um, uh, systems, communication data systems, security control systems as part of this project. We're very familiar with security cameras, security fences, security gates, personal entry systems that we coordinated in all these projects uh, on the above. The, um, the project is design experience of high wind resistance, which w this will entail. Uh, we've done numerous mi mid to high rise condominiums at the island, uh, which incorporate uh, the new IBC code requirements and TDI requirements, and we're very, very familiar with those. Inland one, inland two, and very island construction, we're inland one, which requires uh, construction to be conformance to TDI requirements, and we're very capable of doing that. Jessica Quintanilla's uh, structural engineers uh, have been serving in Texas since 1984. They have extensively done uh, numerous projects related back to what we're doing here. The Emergency Operating Center Center in San Antonio, the Wells Fargo Data Center in Irvine, Texas, Bank, Data, uh, Bank One Data Center in Bedford, Texas, and the Emergency Operations, Operations and Service, uh, Services Building in Texas A&M you see at Corpus Christi. The communications building at Austin, Berg, uh, Austin Bergstrom Inter International Airport in Austin, and they also have extensive uh, training and also design capabilities for anti-terrorism anti and high uh, wind resistance, again, meeting the code requirements for this area. HMG as well, 1983, they've been practicing here in, the, in, 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 in Texas. The mechanical electrical plumbing, uh, with emphasis on that, They've done the University of Texas at Brownsville Regional Academic Health Center here in Brownsville, uh, University of Texas San Antonio Engineering and Bioscience Building, the Randolph Air uh, Force Base Mechanical Systems, and the SCADA system, which is the main component of the, or the brains of the system that we're going as a consultant, Mr. Ron Brown, with over 25 years of experience in the systems that we are trying to incorporate into this building. What is the sign criteria for this building? We'll need to meet the owner's needs. Define the scope of work, working with uh, staff and coordinating information. We also need to define the owner's budget, make sure that as we go with the design, it ha hand in hand with the design and the budget, and provide a functional design. That's without a cause. That, that has to be done as part of the, the system. Of course, the main uh, system, the SCADA system, is being incorporated into the system will include the security, coordination of energy transportation and distribution of electrical power, provide for customer service calls, respond to natural disasters, respond to emergencies, and also acts of terrorism. How we will go into this building? As far as design, we need to have an energy efficient building. I'd uh, like to incorporate new technology, such as ICF systems. There are high te technology systems that we need to provide 
for energy control, and that's my intent to, to do for a building like this. Of course, also meeting the Texas Department of License Regulations, TDLR, ADA requirements, the TDI, Texas Department of Insurance for wind uh, requirements, and the newly adopted uh, IB, uh, International Billing Code by the City of Brownsville. These are some projects we've done on our office, the Union Pacific Railroad Building, just recently completed, four to five building, a lot of communications, coordinated with agencies, customs, and other Union Pacific Railroad people that uh, we uh, did, uh, and then uh, again, coordinated a lot of efforts between the port and, and them. The iTech Center, uh, we just com completed that uh, for uh, uh, Dr. Garcia, uh, Dr. Moore. Uh, this is the work training center, incorporated legal, um, uh, the uh, law enforcement training, data systems, communications, the nursing programs. Uh, again, we're capable of doing all the coordination of the data systems. Uh, recently also, uh, well, the, the uh, Harbor Masters Building incorporated a lot of uh, different agencies, uh, customs and, and border patrol, and also we coordinate a lot of the communications security systems there at the port. Uh, the, the mud building along the express, uh, expressway, again, that was a, a, a municipal d district building that we, we did a while back, and again, coordinating communication systems with that. Uh, the projects at the island that we've done, and again, this is not similar to the project we're doing, but I'm just in emphasizing here the data of, uh, of structural conformance that we've done, such as uh, uh, the $35 million Isola Labella condominiums. We're currently working on a $40 million peninsula, which is the ones in the middle. Uh, Sun Towers on the left, uh, and then we did City Ranch a while back, and, and again, this is a coordination of the structural engineering emphasis on trying to com come up with code requirements as we proceed. Uh, Dr. Wardle's uh, building along the expressway, uh, again, communication status systems, a lot of high tech information that we had to coordinate. Um, the Los Bridge we did for the county, again, uh, security systems and terrorism uh, information that we had to provide and coordinate. Uh, and also, interior wise, we did uh, the Ransom Ray building for uh, the, the attorneys here in town. Uh, the last uh, slide here shows the Dancing Building Cameron County Courthouse we just completed. Uh, again, that was the emergency operating center that is in house. We coordinate that uh, with the county among different uh, departments as far as security, uh, cameras, uh, provisions for all that had to be, you know, custom made for this particular project. And we were well versed in this type of systems. And I hope that you all can consider our office and our design team for us uh, to do your billing. I thank you all very much. Thank you, Mr. Reese. Got one more, right? Yes, one more. And that would be uh, Stanford Knowles that would be making the last presentation. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Honorable <laughs> Mayor, Commissioners, I'm Stanford Knowles. I'm a local architect. I know you all have met me before. Uh, we're excited about presenting this because we've teamed with Bath uh, engineers out of Corpus Christi. They've designed a good many command centers as well as SCADA systems all over the state and now uh, regionally. We also have teamed with uh, Bill Reifert out of uh, San Antonio, who's done an awful lot of structural work for us, and he's actually designing blast-proof buildings for uh, Randolph Air Force Base and Lackland Air Force Base. So we're excited about that as a good team. I'd like to introduce Richard Pittman, and he can tell you more about the uh, control center. Commissioners, pleasure to be here this evening. Thank you for having us. My name is Richard Pittman, and I'm president of Bath Engineering Company. 
Uh, just had my 30th anniversary with that company, and we've been in business now for 50 years, celebrating our 50th anniversary. Also want to introduce, I have Jim Johnston, one of our senior engineers. <clears throat> if we're fortunate to get this project, he's going to be the technical muscle behind the thing. He's done lots of systems, SCADA systems, a lot of command systems, command and control systems. Also, <clears throat> by the way, electrical engineer, uh, 25 years experience, registered from the state of Texas. Also have uh, Joe Martinez, somebody that's from McAllen. He's been with us for 15 years in Corpus Christi. He's also an electrical engineer registered in the state of Texas. As you can see, we've got offices in Corpus Christi, uh, El Paso, and Juarez, Mexico, and teaming with Stanford uh, gives us a location here in Brownsville also. A little bit of background about our company. Uh, we've got 60 plus employees with the offices that we have. Uh, like I said, our 50th anniversary. The areas that we specialize in are high voltage power, uh, control and instrumentation, distributed control systems and the integration that goes along with that. We've done lots of water, wastewater work. I'm going to show you the SCADA system that we did for the city of Corpus Christi in a moment where we're covering a 70 mile radius area. Security, uh, security work right now we're on our sixth grant with the Port of Corpus Christi. We did their command and control center. $35 million worth of construction that we've done for them now. In our company, we have got over 500 years of experience in engineering. One of the things that I think that we do bring to you today is a local knowledge of the South Texas and border area. Coastal environment, we know what it's like to design things here on the coast. Uh, if, it, it, if it's not stainless steel or hot dip galvanized, it's not going to last. Like I said, the border culture, construction, contractors, materials in the area, methods of construction, the cost. We know system integrators in the area. We've done lots of SCADA systems here. Uh, with Stanford being the prime, based right here in Brownsville, minutes away from your facility, with us in Corpus Christi, we can be here in two hours. So travel time uh, and personal uh, meeting with you will not be an issue. I mentioned the Port of Corpus Christi. I show you some of the command control centers that we've done now. Uh, Port of Corpus Christi, that one actually, if you get on our website, uh, the CNN News did an article uh, on that facility. City of Corpus Christi, their water wastewater system. It was our original understanding this was going to be an energy control and command center, power only. But we found out a little while ago that there is water wastewater involved, and we've done pretty much every uh, sewage treatment plant and integrated with it around the whole Corpus Christi and South Texas area. Refinery Petrochem, we've done many, many facilities for them. SCADA, I heard the word SCADA. Uh, we are uh, in our arena SCADA experts. Uh, right now, finishing up a project at uh, Naval Air Station Pensacola where we are monitoring a softly feel the Kobe Field, we're doing all of their water, wastewater, and their electrical systems. Nine substations there with that facility. Uh, Naval Training Center, Great Lakes, we've got 11 substations up there with uh, fiber optic interconnect between all of them, communication. Uh, if you don't know anything about the Naval Training Center, Great Lakes, that is about 35 miles north of Chicago on Lake Michigan. Anybody that goes through into the Navy a day goes through training at that facility. This is the site of Pensacola where we're covering that 50-mile uh, area. And when it comes to power, uh, I'm an ex-CPNL AEP employee. Uh, there's four of us in my office. Jim is an ex-Houston Lighting and Power. I've got three in El Paso. We understand power systems. Anything from 12 kV to 138, Arnaldo Guerra in our office is used to run the South Texas, Brownsville, San Benito area for AEP. So we're very familiar with power, power systems. Stanford? Back to the local end of it. We want to show a couple of works we've done here. We've got a very good record with the city of Brownsville. All of the projects that I have done since 1996 returning to Brownsville, every public project I've done has been under budget and on time. I bring that because you've seen an awful lot of projects lately that have gone to outside firms out of the valley that haven't teamed well with a good local architect and they've gone, the budget has gone through the roof. They haven't met what the city really wanted and they've run off and, and run on their own. 
I'm excited about working with uh, Richard and his team because they've already expressed to me that this is something they'll be careful with for us. Working with your administrators, with the board if you like, if you want to work directly with us, uh, we'll be on board daily on a regular basis to help you achieve what we would like to achieve in this facility and be conscious of budget and longevity on, on the property. I show these actually because uh, the Tennis Center, we won a national award. We're the, I think we're the only firm in the county or the valley to win a national award. The Univers uh, U.S. Tennis Association gave us an award for that property, for that facility. Aircraft and Rescue Firefighting Facility, we show that one because we met STCC ratings. Uh, we have uh, federal requirements, federal, uh, federal Aviation Association's requirements. We met them uh, and they're excited about that. People can sleep at that facility at night with airplanes landing. That's one of the concerns you have. If you have a dormitory inside this facility in a hurricane or whatever, it needs to be comfortable. We're going to do that. The uh, 802 North Brownsville transfer station that we did for the city, uh, that one's already getting acc accolades throughout the industry. That facility is being highlighted in the Barrage Roofing nationally in their, their brochures, as well as Epic Metals, who did the uh, ceilings uh, nationally in their brochures because they like the project so much. Beyond that, it's designed to 130, 140 mile an hour wind loads. So we are beyond the requirement uh, for the wind requirements in, in hurricanes. And I go back to that again because Bill Reifert, who we work with on a regular basis, he works with five different architects in the valley, but he's worked with us on a regular basis and he does blast proof buildings for uh, Air, air st naval air stations. He's actually doing a command center for Randolph Air Force Base. Yeah, so, if we like, if you don't want a building to blow up, we'll go beyond the hurricanes, which is part of the program. Jim, why don't you talk a little bit about special considerations? Oh, okay, I wanted to. I'm Jim Johnston. I'm the probably the technical liaison for this project in terms of the building and its infrastructure design. Special things that need to be considered for what the, the, the Public Utility Commission of Brownsville is looking to do: raised floor construction. Very very much, very much required in a facility like this. Redundant air purifying HVAC systems, backup emergency <coughs> power systems. We're talking UPS powers with auto, UPS backup with automatic transfer. Talk about composite wall video display screens. Uh, we talk about common graphical user interfaces uh, so it makes it easier for the users to understand what they're seeing on the screen and how it's being displayed. Modular operator workstations for the convenience and the flexibility and ergonomics of performing the day-to-day -day user activities. Head-in telecommunication room design. Security harden. Any NERC, NERC requiring now a lot of security measures being taken with energy control centers to preserve the integrity and reliability of their operation. Fire protection and detection and the network critical physical infrastructure design. That's what we do. That's what I do. That's the heart of what Bath Engineering will deliver to this project. Again, based in Brownsville, Corpus Christi, we're closest as a team to the site. Uh, we can produce, and more than that too, actually if you go back to 1986, uh, I was the architect for the first 911 service for the city of Brownsville. At the time, that was the fifth in the state of Texas. So we were ahead of most of the cities in the United States, and not just the state of Texas, but the United States. Most of the projects I work on are innovative, they're different, they're not your everyday project. We're do, we don't do cutty, cur, uh, tripping over my words. We don't do cookie cutter projects. We do projects that need a lot of client input and a lot of client attention. So we're happy to bring that to the table. Stanford, I want to say, uh, based on what I've seen locally, <coughs> I've talked to say, Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> on behalf of Beautified Corpus Christi Association and being president of that organization, I appreciate what you're doing for the beauty of South Texas. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Next item. Do we need to vote on this? Next time. This is discussion. Next okay. Any questions from the board? Any questions? Mm -hmm. Next item. We go back to number eight. We go back to number eight.
consideration and approval to increase hourly rate for valley-wide security service. Mr. Brusiak. Mr. Garcia. Yes, uh, we've been uh, asked to consider a contract adjustment here to accommodate an hourly uh, rate increase for our security vendor, valley-wide security. Uh, I, uh, I, I recommend approval of this. It, it, it turns out to be a dollar increase per hour uh, through the duration of the contract, retroactive to 9 nine, nine uh, September 9th. Uh, the financial impact will only be $7,300. I'm sorry? Why is it increasing? Why is it increasing? They have, uh, we've, we've had uh, some minimum wage increases nationally, and their, their hourly rate at this point is 875 and they're asking for a dollar increase. Uh, we, we staff is pleased with the service. They okay, I'll also move, Mr. Chairman. Mr. By the way, Mr. Jaime Ochoa is here if you, if you wish to hear from him as well. I move to motion uh, made by Mr. Valadez. Is there a second, gentlemen? Well, my, my question is, is there's no there's no figure here about the the, the, the amount of increase. Uh, and, and that's and that's okay. what Mr. Ochoa was was going to you know appeal to or request. He is. We are in agreement to about a dollar. About a dollar increase hourly hourly rate increase. Mr. Ochoa, is you. About a dollar per hour. Motion also, also move, Mr. Chairman. Second. Okay, motion made by Mr. Valadez, seconded by Dr. Savaleta. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any against? Motion passes to increase the hourly rate for valley wide security service by one dollar? More, more or less. By, by one dollar. They have different types of payments, oh. but the overall is $7,300 for the contract, the remainder of the period. Okay, motion. Recommend. Motion passes. On the staff recommendation, item number 10, consideration and approval of the selection of an architectural engineering firm for the design, planning, construction, management of the new Energy Control and Incident Command Center building and approval for the general manager to commence contract negotiations. Mr. Sines. Mr. Chairman, you, you uh, had the three firms come before you and make their presentation and had the opportunity <coughs> to ask some questions. Um, just based on the presentations and uh, looking over here the, at, the, at the, the way they graded them, uh, Stanford & Knowles is a local firm, and I, they, they scored a little bit lower than another firm, but it was because of experience. And looking at the qualifications and the schedule and budget, they actually came out higher rated than them. So being that it's a local firm and it's not that much of a difference, I'll go ahead and make a motion for Stanford & Knowles. Motion made by Mr. Valadez. Second. Second by Dr. Savaleta. Four. Can you repeat the name? Stanford Knowles. Stanford Knowles. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any against? Uh, motion passes for Stanford Knowles. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Item 11, consideration and approval to execute agreement with First Southwest Company for financial advisory services. Mr. Garcia. Yes, uh, we have had follow-up negotiations with First Southwest. Mr. Raul Senor is our financial advisor. He has uh, presented a, a, an, an agreement for your consideration. The annual retainer fee will, retainer fee will be $50,000, and uh, we, we do have the agreement on here uh, that we're ready to execute with him. Also so moved. Move. Second. Uh, motion made by Dr. Savaleta, seconded by Mr. Valadez to execute agreement with First Southwest Companies for financial advisory services. All those in favor? Uh, I, think, I think maybe you need, uh, okay. you need to say that the re annual retainer fee of 50000 plus any additional out-of-pocket expenses. I think with the annual retainer fee of $50,000 plus any out-of-pocket expenses. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any against? Motion Anybody passes. No, no, we, we didn't ask him. Motion passes, Council. All right. Now, item number 12, consideration and approval of authorization for the general manager and chief executive officer to approve legal and engineering services as needed. Mr. Garcia. Yes, uh, this is our annual request to, to provide authority to our uh, general manager as, as we progress through the year and need services from engineers and legal uh, uh, firms to give them authority to, to contract them as needed. Any item over 25000 we do bring to the board. Uh, we're asking for 2,555,000 uh, level of authority, of which consists of 1,255,000 for legal and 1.3 million for engineering services. For your 2008, right? 
for the fiscal year 2008. The only thing that I would uh, that I would ask you all to strike out Lewis Jones for Dannenbaum Engineering because they are embroiled in a controversy here and in other places that are all along the border. So if, if I'd like to, for you all to scratch these people out. Okay. Uh, the rest of the people are always mean. And, and one, of, one of the reasons we do the list is we have these firms that are qualified. It's not an ex, an ex, an, it, it's not restrict us to just this it's list. It's not that you're going to give we're, these people contracts. Right. right. And we're going to continue adding but, to the list. But my, my request, uh, Leandro, is to strike not out. to do business with Lewis Jones and Dannenbaum because of the problem that they're having at the port. <clears throat> do that. Also move, uh, accept the staff's recommendation with the amended, by the, with the request of Mr. Dr. Savaleta. All right, second. Uh, motion made by Mr. Valadez, seconded by Dr. Savaleta, to authorize the general manager and chief executive officer to approve legal and engineering services as needed uh, with the addition of the request from Dr. Savaleta to omit Lewis Jones and Dannenbaum Engineering from that list. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any against? That motion passes. Number 13, consideration and approval of rejection of bids for the installation of underground electrical cable and conduit. Mr. Garcia. Yes, uh, due to some ambiguities in our RFP uh, in trying to secure the services uh, for installation of underground electrical cable and conduit, we did uh, reject the bids that were received back in August and then we extended and, and clarified some of the provisions in the bid and have a related uh, award uh, agenda item in the consent uh, section is item number three. So. This time we're formally doing the rejections. Also move. Second. Motion made by Mr. Valadez, seconded by Dr. Savaleta, on, uh, on the approval of rejection of bids for the installation of underground electrical cable and conduit. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any against? Motion pr passes. Number 14, consideration and approval to reject bid for detailed design, shop fabrication, and installation of aluminum Aluminum odor control covers for grit basins at the South Wastewater Treatment Plant. Mr. Garcia. Yes, uh, we've been trying to uh, make some improvements at our South Plant. Uh, we had engineers uh, do internal estimates uh, for some of the work we're requiring there for odor control. Their estimate was 226,543. Uh, we did uh, uh, try to send or send out the bid to about 124 firms, only received one. That bid came in at 318,000, which is significantly over the, uh, the engineer's estimates, so we're asking to have that rejected. At the same time, we're going to uh, redo the bid to include the north plant and kind of uh, uh, break out the work that we're needing between uh, a contractor and some internal uh, uh, POB crews. So we're asking uh, here to formally reject uh, the one bid that we did get. Also moved, Mr. Chairman. Motion Second. made by Mr. Valadez, seconded by Dr. Savaleta to reject the bid for detailed design, shop fabrication, and installation of the aluminum odor control covers for grit basins in the South Wastewater Treatment Plant. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any against? Motion passes. Number 15, consideration and approval to award construction contract for the 2 million gallon elevated water storage tank project EST-7, bid number 071-07. Mr. Garcia. Yes, uh, we're ready to proceed with the construction phase of, of this project. Uh, we've gotten all the, the design work, and we did release the, the, the RFP and received three bids. Uh, the three uh, uh, bidders were CB&I construction, landmark structures, and Caldwell tanks. Uh, the, the lowest bid here, and, and that's what we're recommending, is landmark uh, with a bid of <coughs> 3310000 for the, uh, uh, the construction of the 2 million uh, gallon elevated uh, storage tank. Any local? Any of these locals? No, this is highly specialized yeah. with this type of I shall move. Motion made by uh, Dr. Savaleta, seconded by Mr. Valadez, to approve the award construction contract for the 2 million gallon elevated water storage tank project. All those in favor? To Aye. 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 Any against? Motion passes. Number 16, consideration and approval. Authorizing the general manager and chief executive officer to conduct an electrical municipal cost of service and rate study for the Brownsville Public Utilities Board. Mr. Garcia. Yes, uh, in response to, uh, to our request from our city commissioners to uh, look at the, the municipal rate, uh, which is what we charge for electric to all city facilities, um, 
Uh, we're asking your, uh, your guidance as to how we should proceed on this. Uh, our municipal rates have not been uh, reviewed since 1996. Uh, uh, we, we are ready to, to proceed with uh, contracting our, our Black & Veatch, our customer service consultant, if your desire is to look at those rates and see if there's any relief opportunities. Uh, what we handed out was, was, was the current rates uh, structure for municipal facilities. We have a, a non-demand rate uh, and then we have a, a, a demand rate. How much is this going to cost? Uh, we still need to, to work out the scope with Black & Veatch. Uh, More or less? It, it probably will be under 25000 Okay, John, uh, this, the last time you did this was when? 96. 96. So most likely it's going to go up, right? Yeah, I, I mean, think it's, it's got to go up. It's yeah, to I, down. I, now, are you sure the, the commission requested this? This this is part of, of the, uh, uh, the the request we got during the budget process to find a way to provide relief to the. But was it an action item? It wasn't an action item. It was commissioner uh, direct request to to me and to, what to John. What commission requested this? Uh, the medals, no? It was it was discussed and during a meeting by uh, Mr. Atkinson, Commissioner Atkinson, Mr. Uh, Commissioner Cisneros, and even uh, Commissioner Tuani uh, was 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 favorably but, looking at some of the. But, uh, but shouldn't they pay for it? No, 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 no. Wait a second. This, this uh, they want this. I think we should let them have it. I think if they want this, I think we should let them have it. I mean, they want a, a rate study in 1996. Um, was the last time. That's over 10 years. Um, you know, they think that PUB is somehow overcharging the city. I think this will show that, hey, we've been very kind to the city. The, the I think let's do it. The initial request was for a wholesale rate. We don't have a wholesale rate. And then we, we did provide this rate information and, and kind of, we, we want to make sure they were aware of what, what Your, breaks are the rate supply. Remember, they wanted a special rate for the city discount and all this other stuff. And, and, they're, they're, and if you Take into account, it's only a penny above our cost, I think, something like that. That doesn't cover our costs and operations. Also so move, Mr. Second, Chair. I make the motion. Go ahead. Uh, motion made by Mr. Valadez, seconded by Dr. Want. Savaleta. All, tho all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any against? Uh, motion passes to give authorization to the general manager and chief executive officer to conduct an electrical municipal cost of service and rate study for the Brownsville Public Utilities. That motion passed. Thank Number 17, consideration and approval of Brownsville Public Utility Board personnel policy number 37 on fraternization. Mr. Brusiak. Uh, Mr. Chair, members of the board, this is a request of the board, I believe, in our last uh, meeting. Uh, it was a policy that uh, the board had requested. We, we presented it to the board. There was no action. Uh, we uh, beefed it up a little bit, if, if you can see. Uh, Frank Garza with John Davidson's office prepared it. Uh, John wasn't here yet, and uh, I think it's a good policy. And you you feel comfortable with it? Yes. Uh, John Davidson's gone. John Schmidt, have you re reviewed that policy? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Yeah. You feel comfortable with it? Yes, sir. Okay. So move. So move. And I want to say, it took about two years. Well, <laughs> we we were asking this for two years. There was a policy that the board that I think went from Rodriguez, Calvin, and Cheney that the board didn't take any action on because it, it wasn't quite as uh, rigid as this is. But let it be known, we're the ones who requested this early on about two years ago because it was a concern. Right. We've been sued for sexual harassment and stuff like that, and we want to eliminate that. Thank you. Okay, motion made by Mr. Valadez and seconded by Dr. Savaleta on the approval of policy number 37 on fraternization. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any against? That motion passes. We now Seven. go to the, the consent item. agenda items. If any, if nobody has questions on the consent, I'll move to approve consent well, items. I, I have item seven. Okay, item seven. Okay, I'm they sorry. want to go to <laughs> number seven. Consideration and approval to amend engineering contract with Ambiotech Engineering. Oh, that's just to finish out. Okay, I don't have any problem. Okay, there's been a motion by Mr. Valadez to approve consent agenda items one through eight. Is there a second? Aye. Second. There is a second from Mayor Amwada to pass agenda items, consent agenda items one through eight. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those against? Motion passes. And Mr. Chairman, before we... Yes, sir. Before we go ahead and, uh, and adjourn, 
I'd like to say, uh, you know, th this is my last meeting here at PUB. I didn't, I didn't know that I was uh, going to be on here today, but, uh, you know, this is my last meeting, and uh, I've served with many, many board members. Uh, well, let, let, me, let me just correct you on this. Your term does not expire until November the 10th. There may be special meeting between now and then. Well, if I'm here if needed, but uh, uh, I just wanted to take this opportunity to, to, to thank all PUB staff. You know, I've uh, worked with a lot of you. Uh, I've made some new friends, and uh, we're going to still continue to, to have a contact. Uh, I've served, uh, when I first came on the board, I had the pleasure of serving with Mr. Raul Vestero, uh, which uh, took me under his wing and, and taught me how to comport myself in the, in the boardroom. Uh, and also with Mr. Sam Pate, Mr. Billy Bradford, uh, Mr. Oscar Garcia, uh, Eddie Trevino, uh, ex-Mayor Eddie Trevino, and, and you gentlemen here uh, with Mr. Villarreal and Mr. Guerra, and I've learned a, a great deal from each and every one of you. And I just want to say that my time here has been, uh, you know, I've learned a lot from, from these men and also from the people here, and I just want to say that P Brownsville PUB is the number one, uh, it's the number one jewel of Brownsville. And when we came in here, uh, the, you know, our reserves were very low. They were non-existent. Well, exactly. I didn't want to say that, but non-existent. But now we have the reserves that are that are good. We tighten up the belt. I think uh, every decision that that I've made on this board has been uh, for the betterment of this utility. And John, I want to thank you for, uh, you know, you've helped me a great deal. Also with Mr. Campirano, it's not uh, at the port. And uh, I just want to thank you. I thank you very much for making my my time here very pleasant. Thank, thank you. you. I, 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 thank, uh, and I also want to thank Mr. Savaleta <laughs> for appointing me, I but I, so I've got to thank him twice. I want to say something some, that I've known Chris for quite a while, and uh, I have the utmost respect for him. Uh, he's a humble person. If you notice, his photo is not up there. He was chairman before a present chairman. And I had asked that a proclamation be issued on his behalf, recognizing for his service. Uh, he has tried to do what's right for PUB, and I think he's, for, he's made the tough decisions and taken a lot of heat for making the tough decisions. Uh, he asked me to withdraw the proclamation. He did not want to be recognized. That's why it was removed. It wasn't for any other reason. And I think it's because he's humble. Um, you know, it's hard to find, uh, it's going to be hard for somebody to replace you because there's a lot of history here in this last four years. If you take into account and you put the benchmarks of where PUB was and where it's now, it's that kind of leadership that has moved PUB forward and it hasn't been easy. And we've taken a lot of heat and we, 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 we made a lot of enemies and some people smell blood, blood and they're like the sharks, they come after us. But that's okay. As long as we know what we're doing is right for our community right for PUB. Politics is a nasty business. I would recommend it for anybody. Let me but just say a few words. I want to say thank you, Chris, for your service. Uh, let me just say a few words. I was the one that, have, that nominated uh, Chris for the board, and three other members of the city commission uh, went along with me. Uh, I'm very proud and honored that I did nominate you. You've done a tremendous job and uh, continue to be part of the community, like you always have. Yes, I do. Okay. <laughs> and I just want to say, you know, Chris, I've appreciated working with you, and you, you, you got a lot of in intellect, a lot of uh, good governing techniques. Uh, I think it, it's a, you're an asset to Cameron County. I think uh, the judge has a good right hand man, and I want to personally thank you for your humor and your comical humor that you have inside. These fine people here at PUV have gotten some good quick laughs with your little one-liners, and we appreciate it, sir. Thank you. Well, thank you, and, and I forgot to say, I, I've learned the most from you, Captain, because uh, because of you, I know who uh, St. Francis of the Sicily is. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> all right, thank you all very much. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Motion made by the mayor and seconded by our favorite water boy, Chris Valadez, to adjourn this meeting. Meeting adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.